Holy Quran has recently been accused of inciting hatred, violence, and terrorism. These attacks hinge on taking verses out of context, omitting parts of verses or sentences, and falsifying translations. One such attack is the movie Fitna by Geert Wilders, which cites five verses from the Quran. In part one of this presentation, we will examine these five verses in detail. The first deception of Fitna is that Surah 8 verse 60 says to commit terrorist acts on civilians. Not only is this translation false, Fitna then fabricates a false context by showing terrorist acts on civilians that directly contradict the meaning of the verse. Let's examine this false translation. Fitna hides two previous verses, first to hide that them refers only to the treaty breakers, and second to hide the context of battle. Third, this is a false repetition to give false emphasis on striking terror. The reciter repeated this phrase only to join the meaning when catching his breath. Fourth, the next verse is omitted, which requires peace offerings to be accepted. Now let's examine this passage in context. Those of them with whom thou madest a treaty, and then at every opportunity they break their treaty. If thou comest on them in the war, deal with them so as to strike fear in those who are behind them. Make ready for them all thou canst of armed force and of horses tethered, that thereby ye may dismay the enemy of Allah and your enemy. The verse mentions the standard intimidation strategy of the enemy military only in the context of battle against treaty breakers. And if they incline to peace, incline thou also to it. Furthermore, the very next verse requires peace to be accepted if offered. As a result, committing terrorist acts on civilians would be in direct violation of the instructions given by this verse. The second deception of fitna is that Surah 4 verse 56 says to make disbelievers suffer in this life. Fitna then fabricates a false context by showing terrorist acts on civilians that again contradict the meaning of the verse. First, it's obvious that we refers to God. Second, the next verse is omitted, which gives glad tidings to those who believe. Now let's examine this passage in context. This verse warns that only God himself will punish disbelievers in the afterlife, meaning after they have had their entire life to repent, just as Judaism and Christianity inform. And as for those who believe and do good works, we shall make them enter gardens underneath which rivers flow, to dwell therein forever. And as with every warning in the Quran, it's followed immediately by good tidings to righteous people, and not the somber impression resulting from hiding the next verse. As a result, the actions Fitna accuses this verse of inciting would actually violate it in three ways. To judge instead of God, to punish instead of God, and to do so before the allotted deadline. The third deception of fitna is that Surah 47 verse 4 says to kill non-Muslim civilians and prisoners. Both this false translation and the false context Fitna then fabricates by showing a civilian and prisoner that were killed again directly contradict the meaning of the verse. Let's examine this false translation. This is an incomplete sentence with the rest of the verse omitted. First, to hide the command of releasing prisoners and second, to hide the context of battle. And third, which is why the translation is wrong and should read when you meet in battle or in fight, according to Yusuf Ali and Piktal. Fourth, there's no Quranic term for the mistranslation caused a bloodbath. Athquntum is translated routed or subdued, according to Yusuf Ali and Piktal. Now let's examine this passage in context. 
Now, when he meet in battle those who disbelieve, then it is smiting of the necks until when ye have routed them, then making fast of bounds, and afterward either grace or ransom, till the war lay down its burdens. That is the ordinance. Smite at their necks is the equivalent of shoot to kill, standard in all rules of engagement. This verse permits killing of only enemy combatants only during battle. Furthermore, the omitted part of the verse requires the release of prisoners mercifully or for reparation. As a result, killing civilians and prisoners is actually in direct violation of this verse. The fourth deception of fitna is that Surah 4 verse 89 says to kill and not befriend apostates and non-Muslims. Again, both this false translation and the false context fitna fabricates by showing violence to apostates and someone desecrating a church directly contradict the meaning of the verse. Let's examine this false translation. First, Fitna hides the previous verse to hide that they refers only to the hypocrites committing treason. Second, this is an incomplete sentence with the next verse omitted to hide the exception of people offering peace. Now let's examine this passage in context. What aileth you that ye are become two parties regarding the hypocrites? So choose not friends from them, till they forsake their homes in the way of Allah. If they turn back to enmity, then take them and kill them wherever ye find them, and choose no friend nor helper from among them. This verse pertains only to hypocrites pretending to be Muslims and deserting the army again before a battle, like any traitor, and has nothing to do with either non-Muslims or apostates. Except those who seek refuge with a people between whom and you there is covenant. So if they hold aloof from you, and wage not war against you, and offer you peace, Allah alloweth you no way against them. And the omitted part of the sentence is the exception for people offering peace, or those joining people protected by a treaty. As a result, not only is this verse innocent of inciting hatred and violence to non-Muslims, again, such actions would actually be in violation of this same verse. The fifth deception of fitna is that Surah 8 verse 39 says to fight dissent to force Islam on the world. Both this false translation and the false context fitna then fabricates by showing inflammatory speeches again directly contradict the meaning of the verse. Let's examine this false translation. Fitna hides the previous verse, first to hide that them refers only to the persecutors, and second to hide that they are forgiven if they cease persecution. Third, this explains why the correct translation of the word fitna in this context, according to Yusuf Ali and Piktal, is persecution or oppression, not just any disagreement or dissent. Fourth, this phrase is translated incorrectly, and this is because the rest of the verse is omitted, as we will see. Now let's examine this passage in context. Tell those who disbelieve that if they cease from persecution of believers, that which is past will be forgiven them. The omitted previous verse explicitly forgives religious persecutors if they cease, and does not demand conversion. And fight them until persecution is no more and religion is all for Allah. But if they cease, then lo, Allah is seer of what they do. This verse calls to fight only to end persecution and oppression. The expression, religion is all for Allah, means choosing Islam should be entirely for the sake of Allah and not by force, especially viewing that the omitted end of the verse repeats again if they cease which proves the objective is to end persecution. As a result, quite the opposite of oppressing people to accept Islam, this verse commands to fight if needed to liberate people from religious persecution or oppression. Allah, 
In conclusion, not only are these five verses innocent of inciting the accused acts of violence, such acts are in direct violation of those very same verses. Any person violating the Qur'an cannot be used to condemn Islam. Geert Wilders has thus proven that attacking any verse of the Qur'an requires systematically providing false translations, falsifying context, and committing grave and unfaithful omissions. This puts into serious question the morality, integrity, or intelligence of anyone claiming the Qur'an incites hatred, violence, or terrorism. Part 2 will continue the analysis of the movie Fitna.